And here's what Ezekiel says, God only you know. Here's where revival is. It is God doing something that is humanly impossible. It's looking at someone or some group of people and that's already been written off or it looks like it's impossible for anything good to come out of this. It is so dry and it's yet God breathing his spirit in our and not because the bones have done something amazing or because there's people around the bones. No one was praying for these bones. No one was doing anything for these bones. Now, I'm not saying prayer isn't a precursor to revival because I believe it is. But here's what happened. God, in his goodness, in his grace, intervenes on a group of people in a way that's never happened before to these bones or in this area. Even Ezekiel couldn't describe what was about to happen because he had no grit for this. But yet, when God asked him, can these dry bones live? Ezekiel said, God, only you know. And God breathes the spirit and these bones rise up. It's amazing to see. And we see another example of this in Acts where God puts his spirit on the church and on, on a group of 120. They're so on fire for God. They're so filled with the Holy Spirit. Anywhere they go, people mistake them as gods. Anywhere they go, miracles, signs, and wonders are happening. Anywhere they go, people are hearing about Jesus. Their lives are transformed. And the Bible says that it is described as them as the men who turn the world upside down. This is what happened when revival happens. And how do we get revival? What happens? How can we be a precursor to revival? What we pray for revival? We ask God to pour out His Spirit because it's His plan. It's His goodness. It's His desire to do so. Joel shows us that. Joel 2.28, I will pour out my Spirit all flesh. That's what God says. But number two, and here's the thing that I think that if we all grab a hold of this, we can truly say now pouring God's Spirit is when we let the Holy Spirit lead. When we let the Holy Spirit do what He wants to do, not just for five minutes, not just for the altar call, but when we actually say, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do in this service? Or Holy Spirit, what do you want to do in this area? Or Holy Spirit, what do you want to do in our church or in our outreach? And we just let Him do what He says He wants to do. And we take control off of the services. We take control off of what we have control on. And we say, Holy Spirit, we want you. We want to do what you want to do. We want more of you. And this is the precursor to revival. I remember um, our first hour of it, now Atlanta, uh, I, you know, I obviously thought that there would be an altar call, um, you know, after the message. And I remember 10 minutes into the service, the Holy Spirit says, I want you to do an altar call for those who are fatherless. And I said, okay, Lord, that's great. We'll do that afterwards. And the Holy Spirit said, no, I want you to do it now. And at that point, I was like, this can't be God. No, I, this, is, this isn't in my box. This isn't what looks like it fits. This isn't what I was thinking. And one of the guys on my team came up to me and he said, hey, bro, uh, the Holy Spirit wanted me to tell you that he wants you to do an altar call right now. And he wants you to do an altar call for those who are fatherless. And he wants you to do an altar call right now. And I couldn't believe it because I didn't tell this guy anything. I didn't tell my friend anything of the sort. It was just a conversation between me and God. But God spoke to him as well and knew this was the Lord. And at that moment, we did an altar call. I got up and just invited those who were fatherless and just to, int to introduce them and to have them meet the Abba Father, the Good Father. And about 10% of the room came down. Miracles started happening in that altar call 10 minutes into the service. And can I tell you, from that point on, there was such a tangible presence of God felt in the room. You could feel a difference in the whole event, the whole service. And from that point on, we started seeing tangible miracles and signs. And now has ever been marked with signs and miracles and wonders. And I believe it was because of a decision that happened 10 minutes into the service that says, God, we're going to trust you. We're going to go with where you want to go. Not how we, how we thought it was going to look. Not how we wrote it in our agenda. But because you said we, you want to do this, we're going to trust you. And every time we go somewhere, we see an outpouring God's spirit. And I believe that he wants to do this in your church, in your youth group, in your campus. But will you just let him have control? Because that's what revival is. And the Holy Spirit breaks out in a way we've never seen. A generation, a nation, a city. Jonah goes to one city, preaches because he's led by the Spirit. Not saying, God, I'll, this is how it's going to look. But he just does what the Holy Spirit wants him to do. And in one day's worth of preaching, the Bible says a whole city came to the Lord and repented. If God could do that in Nineveh, why can't he do that in your city? Why can't he do it in Miami, in LA, in Atlanta, in Philly, in New York? Why can't he do it now? Why can't he do it in London? Why can't he do it today? So guys, I, I hope revival doesn't become a buzzword in your communities or in your circles or in your life. 
but that it's something that you're experiencing. You are marked with revival that your life will never be the same. Guys, this is Two Minute Tuesday. I hope this blessed you. I hope it stirs your heart. And I hope you start to pray for an outpouring of God's Spirit, that you pray for revival in your life, in your campus, in your city, in your nation. Till the next Two Minute Tuesday. Talk to you later.